when the narcissist loses the real one. I provided this video in response to a number of readers and listeners directing me to a particular video, which is part of the misinformation that is provided to you all. The idea is that the narcissist is plunged into some kind of torment at losing somebody identified as the real one. As ever, I'm here to give you the cold, brutal truth. You may not like what you hear, but you need to hear it in order to protect yourselves, in order to ensure that you are not paralysed by the supposedly comforting words of those that do not understand, and instead you receive the cool, hard logic which you must apply to achieve your freedom, which you deserve, to seize the power and build for yourself a proper recovery from what you have experienced. The video in question raised the concept of there being the idea of the real one, that somehow there is some kind of magical individual that is the absolute real person who was the person that could provide us with everything. And it is something that does occur that people often say to me, HG, I don't wish to boast, but I was a real catch. I'm, I'm good looking. I'm very kind. I cater to his every needs. I earn good money. We had a great time together. I'm intelligent. I have a range of interests. He missed out on somebody that would have done anything for him that would want to make it work, would have tolerated some of the behaviours, and yet I was cast aside. Why did he do that? And moreover, is he now regretting the loss of me? That is the concept, in essence, of thinking that there is such thing as a real one, that there is some kind of fabled individual who is the absolute best provider of the prime aims to us that ranks above everybody else. I'm often asked myself, is there one of your appliances, HG, that you regret losing, that you regret no longer being with, that they were better than all of the rest? The fact is, such a question demonstrates an ignorance of what the narcissist is. We do not do regret. We are not made that way. We are not about having regret. Because if we regret something, that means that we must have made a wrong decision. And therefore the admission of fault comes with it the admission of accountability. And that means that we are ceding control. We are giving our control away. And that cannot happen. Our narcissism will not let that happen. Of course, you will meet some mid-rangers that will express false regret. But that's just part of the manipulation to make you think that they do regret things. And in reality, all they're doing is asserting control over you again and drawing fuel from you. There is no regret. And therefore, it follows that there cannot be a real one. There is no real one. Because it always changes. When you first come along, we idealize you. You are wonderful, amazing. Because our narcissism drives us to perceive you in that way in order to drive us to get you under control. Where you are perceived as being effective for the prime aims, our narcissism tells us, this person is amazing, is wonderful. Be in love with them, praise them, adore them, run around and do things for them. And that is just the narcissism driving the narcissist to think and feel that way in order to get that person under control so that they can cater to the provision of fuel, character traits, and residual benefits, i.e. to make the narcissist exist. It is similar in the way that your hunger causes you to eat and your thirst causes you to drink so that you continue to survive. If you didn't get hungry and you were not motivated to eat, you would waste away. So your hunger causes you to act on it so that you stay alive. It's a self-defense mechanism. Your thirst operates in a similar way. For us, 
We need to gain fuel, character traits, and residual benefits by bringing people under control. And therefore, something needs to motivate us to do that. Our narcissism causes infatuation with an individual, so that we lavish them with flattery, we bribe them with gifts, we tell them that we love them, we run around doing lots of things for them, we provide great sex and all of the other things that you're familiar with, with regard to the golden period. We use such words as, you're the chosen one, you were sent from heaven for me, you're my soulmate, I feel such a connection to you, nobody has ever been like this for me ever before, you are the one. But it is all driven by the narcissistic perspective. And there is no real one. Because we've said it to the woman before you and we'll say it to the one after you. Because you're all objects. And sometimes you're lovely and shiny, so we flatter you. And other times you're rusty and manky, so we get rid of you and we devalue you. And we meet out those malign manipulations against you. Be under no illusion. The narcissist never has a real one. Not permanently. So first of all, the narcissist believes that they have the real one, the real catch, so long as the golden period lasts. And then, when you're the intimate partner primary source, as you know, you will always end up, end up being devalued. And then you're no longer the real one. When you're painted white, you are. When you're painted black, you no longer are. And at that point, we don't sit there and think to ourselves, oh dear, it's all gone wrong. Oh, I've messed up with the real one. Our narcissism doesn't cause us to think like that. You are at fault. You've caused the problems. You are a faulty appliance. You are to blame. You're treacherous, a traitor, deceitful, dishonest. And that is why you become devalued. And so we no longer see you as the real one. We see you as the traitorous one. If you were the real one, why would we devalue you? The reason we do is because we have to, and because you are not the real one. Later on, of course, when the, your replacement is being devalued, there is a strong chance, if you don't have a total no-contact regime, that we'll hoover you, and we will come back and say such things as, I really regret losing you. I've realised now how much I loved you. Being with this other person made me realise the mistakes that I made in our relationship, and I have now returned, looking for another chance to make things right. You are the real deal. You are the one. Horseshit. You're just being manipulated again. Charm, pity play, false contrition, promises to change. The narcissist does not sit and reflect. Another video that was directed, sent in my direction, the opening words of this supposed purveyor of information about narcissism said, the narcissist will reflect on what they have done and feel miserable. No, they won't. We don't do that. Self-reflection does not exist with a narcissist. Again, a narcissist might feign that. The narcissist never, ever sits there and thinks, Oh dear, I fucked up. It doesn't happen. The narcissist might analyse whether greater or ultra previous circumstances to work out how more effectively they could operate. But there is no regret as to what was done. And the lesser brushes it off. They just charge ahead, wrecking ball that they are. A mid-ranger might create the appearance of reflection because that's part of their image as a false empath. But they don't. They don't sit there, racked in anguish, thinking, oh, if only I had behaved myself, if only I hadn't abused this person, everything would be all right. They might sit there crying their crocodile tears, but they don't blame themselves. They will only blame themselves as part of the false pity play that is demonstrated in front of you when they wail, oh, if only I hadn't treated my girlfriend like that, she would have still been with me, so that you as a sympathetic friend say, there, there, there. You're being conned. There is no self-reflection. And so afterwards, the narcissist does not look back upon the relationship with you and think you were the real deal and I've now missed out. The narcissist does not look back on the relationship and think, I've lost the real one. What an idiot I am, because the narcissism will never, ever let the narcissist think in such terms. 
the narcissism says, you're well rid of that individual. They conned you into believing that they were the real deal, and they misled you, and you're right and proper to have got rid of them before it got too worse. The narcissism does not cause the narcissist to look back and think, I've lost the real one. Of course, when you escape the narcissist, the narcissist will, invariably, unless there is a replacement immediately on hand, as I explain in my book No Contact, dole out the initial grand hoover. That's being done to bring you under control. Because you have just created a huge hole in the narcissist fuel matrix by escaping. And as the intimate partner primary source, you might be 90% of the prime aims for a lesser narcissist, meaning you cause a huge problem for that narcissist when you depart. And that's why the narcissist fights to draw you back in, to plug that gap, until such time as he can choose to get rid of you, not when you decide to depart. But that's not born out of any sense of, oh goodness me, I fucked up. But rather, who do you think you are escaping from me? You should be here. You belong to me. You are my appliance. You're going nowhere. You're coming back. That's what's going on in the unconscious. There is no regret. The narcissist does not believe that they've lost the real one. Wherever that might be said, that is just a manipulation. And it is important for you to understand this, that you gain this cold, hard logic and apply it and stop being misled by people who don't understand narcissism. I want you to understand it because by understanding it properly, you will get the right result for you and then that extends my legacy and that is why I'm doing it. Recognize there is no regret from the narcissist. Recognize there is no lament. Recognize that there is no looking back and thinking, if only I treated her better. Oh dear, I've really messed up here, haven't I? Narcissists don't think that way. If it's said to you, that's just part of manipulation to draw you back in. But when that narcissist is sat on their own, with no other human being to interact with for the purposes of manipulating them, the narcissist does not sit there and think to themselves, I have led a terrible life, and I have hurt so many people. If only I had behaved myself better. Some narcissists wouldn't even be thinking about anything other than, this ball game's really good. Other narcissists would be thinking about how they have been treated so badly, wallowing in their self-pity, not recognising that they are the one at fault. Their narcissism does not allow it. And of course... Any reflection that might occur by greater or the ultra would be in respect of that was another mission accomplished. Let's look at how effective that was and utilize it again. No narcissist sits and dwells and believes that they have made a mistake. When they are on their own, there is no self-reflection in that regard. And to think to the contrary demonstrates a lack of understanding about the way that we are. Recognize this. And moreover, understand this. You should not be concerning yourself as to whether the narcissist regards you as a loss. Invariably, from your perspective, you are, because you provided all of those things. But that doesn't matter to the narcissist, because when you became painted black, game over. You're out. No matter how stunningly good-looking you were, when you're painted black, you're vain, you spend too much on makeup. No matter how body-conscious you are in terms of healthy eating and going down the gym, when you're painted black, you're gym-obsessed. You think you're gorgeous, but you're not all that. You're really fatty with your eating. I just wanted to be able to eat a pizza, and you always stopped me because you were into your clean living, your clean eating. Everything that's good about you becomes bad because you're either a hero or a zero to us. You're either white or you're black. You're with us or you're against us. So do not think that the narcissist sits and regrets the loss of you. The narcissist does not. You may well, and I understand this, believe that we should, but we don't. And you should not become preoccupied with trying to make the narcissist think that he's lost out on somebody good. You should be thinking, I am decent. I am going to save myself from somebody who truly acknowledges it, i.e. a non-narcissist. 
Do not allow your emotional thinking to get hold of your truth-seeker trait to cause you to become preoccupied with trying to prove to the narcissist that you are the best thing that they've ever had. Do not fall prey to the corruption of your narcissistic trait of pride or vanity to try and demonstrate to the narcissist that they've missed out. The narcissist won't care. You're painted black. And for all of your protestations of you've missed out on a really decent person, the narcissist is not going to go, oh, now you've pointed it out. You're absolutely right. I have, haven't I? Thank you for telling me. Oh, aren't I stupid? Oh, dearie me. The narcissist will feel that that's threatening his control and you're painted black. So all he'll do is insult you. All he will do is reject what you're saying. All he will do is pour scorn on your explanations and protestations. You've just given him fuel. He wins. He's just rejected what you've had to say. He wins. He makes you feel angry, frustrated, unheard, upset, irritated. You lose. You heightened your emotional thinking because you've gone and interacted with a known narcissist, breaching your no contact. You lose. Recognize the narcissist does not lament your loss. It may be done at a future point to con you by making you think that the narcissist has, but it is not genuine. Do not fixate on trying to prove to the narcissist that the narcissist has missed out on somebody decent. Know yourself, put yourself with somebody else, not the narcissist. This is the cold hard logic that you need to absorb, apply, and share with other people. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.